Hi, this is Shane Moore with the Franklin Christian Academy Falcons in Franklin, Tennessee. I've been working with practice sports on narrowing down what it is exactly we want in the batting cage for our baseball program. Practice sports has been amazing. Everything from the customer care to the communication to the quality of the product, Practice Sports has delivered. If you're looking to build a batting cage in your area, look no further. Practice Sports is the way to go. I highly recommend Practice Sports for everything that you need in a batting cage. What you're about to see is step-by-step -step video of how these cages were built. This is our layout. Then we dug our holes right there. There's the other end. We'll come back as soon as the weather passes and start setting our pumps. This is a 28 by 70 pin from there to there. 75 feet end to end. It's all on center. Before we set the middle pole, I put my string line back up to make sure that these poles line up on that string right there. I want to put that middle pole even with that line right there. Going vertical, an inch out at the top. Got to finish up some bracing, but I got these all three in. Perfect on the string line. They're an inch out at the top. Or are you wondering how I set the depth of these poles? Is I dug them out with an auger and I used my elevation laser to get the perfect elevation on each pole so they're all the same height. This is a double lane. When I'm done, it'll be two. But if you just do one, obviously it's just half of it, but you've got your dog ear anchor kit there. I did the anchoring kit on the bottom, so I'll have wires on the bottom. You've got this one here, the dog ear there, dog ear there, two connecting points right here for the middle. And then of course, the outside, same thing, connecting point here, and it'll be the same thing for the top. So you got one there, and I got the bridge system up top, which I'm about to show you. That's that bridge support. So this one's gonna go up this way. Then I'll, I'll do another one. I'll make the X here and I'll put that up and I'll show you how I do that. Obviously you wanna make sure these turnbuckles are all the way out before you take them up there. Otherwise you're spinning them the whole time you're up. This is what it looks like without a net. So you got your outside cable for your net, the other outside cable for your net. And then these two here I cross, which are the bridge cables that support the middle cable that comes right down the middle. And I'll put that in and I'll show you after I hang the net and we're good to go. So now I'm gonna pull the net out here and then I'll start on this side and you'll see how I put it up. Okay, so I have the net laid out and uh, a couple things you're gonna wanna pay attention to. One, the yellow the yellow string is the, is the uh, entrance side. So normally that's where the hitter stands for the batter. So when you lay this out, you wanna pick this up make sure that net is all on the inside otherwise you have it inside out and it'll be up on top of your cage a couple things that are pretty easy to follow um bottoms of the net has a, a red line going through it like that so that this piece here is the bottom which means if you just go up from there which means this here is the top it does not come with the carabiners on them i put these on they go about every 18 to 24 inches um, I put them on so I don't have to do it as I'm up in the air. And then <clears throat> same thing on this side. So this is how it's going to go up just like this. And then there's your bottom. It's got the red to it. And the, and the top does not have any red to it. It's just got the red on the bottom, black on the top. So I put all these carabiners on. And then what I'll do is I'll pull the net all the way over this way. So when I put my ladder up just like that, I'm not sitting on top of the net. That side is done i'm not stretching this all the way over because i want to uh, make sure i get the cables tight and all that stuff and then i'll pull those over at the very end like i did on that other side um, but i'm going to start on this side same exact technique so this is probably a little bit more of a difficult part because you kind of have to hold it stretch it with one hand um, as you climb the ladder remember i did it from the inside to get started a little safer to go up this way Now I'll go on the outside, now that I got started. 
I wouldn't go from the inside, but the net's in the way. Okay, so I just attached the middle one, middle wire right there, and it goes through right at the top of this net. And it goes along the top of the net. A little, little more difficult, I had to get another ladder, push it through, dead end it right up there, come all the way through. And it goes through the middle of the net, all the way down here to the, to the end. This is probably the most difficult one to do by yourself. And so what I had to do is I got this other little ladder Hold it through and then I put the turnbuckle on it to give it some weight to let it hang there so it wouldn't pull it back inside the net. Okay, now that I got that on, it's all connected. I tied that wire a little bit. I'm gonna go off and start turning the turnbuckles. I'll just put the screwdriver through there, start twisting them, and I'll pull that up a little bit, pull this one up a little bit, and tighten all these until I get the net lifted exactly where I want it to. All I have left to do is really is just the clip. They have wire tires, not clips, but the wire ties. They just wire, they tie this to this. Okay, so I got the cables all on, nets all strung out and clipped back on each end. So now all I have left, I got, it all, I got all the cables tightened. As you can see in the bottom, it's just, just the right height. So that holds out like that. And now what I'll do is I'll go back to those very top corner turnbuckles. I'll tighten those and it'll actually bring that center up even higher. One last thing I gotta do is I gotta clip this bottom cable to this net and it'll look just like this when I'm done. And that's all I do just to keep it down. And uh, same thing on the other end. And that makes it easy because if you would need to get a pitching mount in and out of here, you can just un unclip those. And I'll probably put a few on this side too to give me some more room. Um, gives you some options of getting stuff in and out of the cage um, <coughs> with the clips. So if you zip tie them like we're going to do on this side, you can't lift them up. Um, that's why I put those on the back. It's a good option for you. It's hard to get things in and out of that gate back there. So there you have it. Okay, so this is the final product here. Oh, I ran this cable back here like I did on the last one. Instead of clipping this one, I actually weaved it through the rope on the bottom. You'll see that. And I just do that so it, it's a little heavier on the bottom and uh, I can tighten that up, keep it keep it low as the balls come this way. They don't get underneath the net. Um, so outside of clipping these down on the out here, this is completely done and you can see, got that inside wide open. Clip there, all that's ran on that side. Clipped in the middle. This is awesome. 10 out of 10, I recommend these cages are awesome. Everybody that's been out here to look at them have said that, that uh, they are phenomenal. There's no pulls in between for balls to bounce off of. I would recommend it any day of the week and that's why I bought these, so thank you.